to have you tonight. Let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into some songs, and uh, we'll get into some food. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for meeting us here. We thank you, God, for your love and faithfulness, which is new each and every day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your your love that you provided for us, Lord. We ask you that you would touch us tonight, that you would touch this, this event, this time that we have together. Let, let it be pleasing to your ear. Let our conversations be pleasing to your ear around the tables, Lord. Lord, we love you. We give you this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to get started with a, just a few songs this evening. I will return. that you can guess how many are in that jar for a price. So um, feel free to wander around and take a look at that throughout the evening. And Pastor John is going to come and pray over the meal this evening. Just a reminder, we'll line up starting at the doors and working our ways through the tables. Just a reminder for everybody. Okay. <laughs> don't, go, yeah, don't go to the middle of the table and don't go to the restroom doors. It's the back doors. That's where you start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time together. Thank you for all the hard work that has 
put into making this a beautiful evening. We thank you for Ken and for, for Christy and for all of the efforts of all of the volunteers. What a beautiful night to be together. We ask your blessing on our fellowship. Bless the good food to our bodies and bless the hands prepared it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, we have some special guests with us this evening that have come to share some beautiful music with us. And I'm sure you're familiar with both of them. Um, Andrew has um, been part of our worship team and our choir, and he's an amazing vocalist. And then Miss Julie Gerbracht is going to join him in a little bit. They're a special guest. And we just want to welcome them one. So, Andrew, would you come? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. for 
my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved our chains are gone we've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me amen and then the prayer of God watching over us and God directing our paths and then the the the, the eye of God upon a sparrow and he watches over us every move that we make and we sing because we are happy we sing because we are free we sing as a light in this dark place in this world that brings me to the 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 devotion that we have tonight being a light in the world does it seem important to you that christ calls us what he called himself he said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. And in Matthew 5, 14, he said that you are the light of the world. Amen? Amen. Servants of Christ shine with his light in a society that is hopelessly lost, lost, left to itself. No answer. Now we answer two questions. Number one, what is the basic function of light? And number two, how can that function best occur? The answer to the first question of what is the basic function of light is obvious. It is to dispel darkness. Darkness cannot remain when a light is turned on. I don't care how thick the darkness may be. When I'm driving down the Cajon Pass and it's night, 
in the morning at 5.30, when I'm driving down, I turn on my lights so that I can see and so others can see me. I can see the big rig in my rear view mirror coming on my tail. I can get out of the way because I don't want to get run into. You can see the lights behind you. You can see the light in front of you. You can see the road lit up in front of you. And the answer to the second question, how can that function best occur, is found in Jesus' own words. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. That's in Matthew 5, 14 and 15. How can darkness de be dispelled? First, by not hiding the light. It must be set on a hill. And second, by not limiting the light. Put it on a lampstand. It gives light to all who are in the house. What stars are to the night sky, Christ's servants are to a dark, darkened world. When we go out at night and we look up in the sky, and we're on the outskirts of Apple Valley, because if you're in Victorville, there's a lot of light down here. We can't see the stars. But when you're out in the outskirts of Apple Valley or out in the, in the mountains, you can look up and you can see those bright, shining stars. We are like those shining stars. Those in the light are a weird phenomenon to those in darkness. And that is exactly as Jesus planned it. Think of some distinctive characteristics of light. Light is silent. No noise, no big splash, no banners. Light simply shines. It's like a single lighthouse along a dark, rugged shoreline. All it does is shine. How many people have seen lighthouses up close and personal? I've been to the Portland Headlight on the East Coast in Maine. And wow, that thing is unbelievable. And sure enough, it just shines. It does have a horn. You know, say, ah, look out, here comes the rocks. You know, it doesn't, but the light, it just shines. It doesn't make any noise. It's, it has no big splash and no banners. Light gives direction. No words, no sermon. Jesus says that others see a Christian's actions. He says nothing about non-believers hearing what a believer says. Light attracts attention. You don't have to ask people to look at you when you turn on a light in a dark room. It happens automatically. If you are a Christian on an athletic team, with non-Christians, you are the light in a darkness. Amen. If you are a Christian family in a non-Christian neighborhood, you are the light in a darkness. The same is true if you are the only Christian nurse on your floor, or student in your school, or professional in your firm, or a salesperson in your district. You are the light in darkness. A servant of God who is being watched, who gives off light, a very distinct message with hardly a word being said. At first, they may hate the light, but don't worry. They are still attracted to it. Let it shine. Don't attempt to show off how bright and sparkling you are. Just shine. That is our devotion for tonight. When you are in your homes, when you are in your workplaces, when you are at the grocery store, let your light shine. No matter where you are. And it doesn't have to be with words. It's with actions. It's how you live. How you reply to other people. How you, do you have a smile on your face? 
How many times I've seen Christians go to restaurants after church? <laughs> How many times I've been one of those Christians after church with a scowl on my face when I go to the restaurant? They skipped me. I can't believe that. Lead with grace. Lead with mercy. Oh yeah, I've times I've done that. <laughs> and I'm preaching to myself here, you know. I'm not just I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me too. When you're at work and you deal with people who are unbelievers and you hear some words that you'd rather not hear or you hear some stories that okay, I need to walk away from this conversation. You let your light shine. They can see you. They can see your actions. They can see where you're going. They can see who I'm not trying to pick on an individual at my office, but there was, a, there was an individual there who professed all the time she was a Christian. She was a Christian. She was a believer. And she was one of the most grumpy people you ever meet. <laughs> there were so many people who came up to me afterwards and, you're one of those Christians, aren't you? Yes, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. How come she acts like that? You don't act like that. I try not to. You know, it, it lets your light shine. Just like it says here, a Christian on an athletic team with non-Christians, you are the light in the darkness. If you're a Christian family in a non-Christian neighborhood, you are the light in the darkness. When you're driving home, and you can't get into your driveway because there's a basketball game going on in the street. <laughs> Don't honk and stare at them with a scowl on your face. Get out of my way. Be kind. Lead with mercy. Lead with grace. Let your light shine. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being an example of shining so that we could look to you and shine too. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Holy Spirit to give us guidance, to give us wisdom on how to let our light shine. Lord, we ask that you would touch us tonight, that you would challenge us and encourage us and draw us close to you, Lord. Lord, draw us close to you so that when we leave, your presence. We, we know we never leave your presence, but when we leave that place of intimacy, Lord, that we would go and shine. Amen. We would be like Moses was, that people would be, why is there such a difference on your face? Your face radiates. What is it? Help us, Lord, to, to spread your gospel, to show that it's the love of God on our faces. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this night. And we ask that you would bless it and continue to guide us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Well, can we give our singers another hand tonight? I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful time together. We look forward to the day when we can all gather around the throne and sing praises and fellowship forever with you. Bless each one and keep them close to you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. There are three easy ways to give tonight. The first is through PushPay. Simply text through your smartphone VF Assembly to 77977. The second is by going to the church website at www.vfassembly.org and click Give at the top right side of your screen. The third way you can give is to mail your giving directly to the church at 15260 Nisqually Road in Victorville, 92395. Thank you and may God bring His richest blessings upon you as you give. God bless. <laughs>